Welcome to Easter House Parish Church in Glasgow. Thanks so much for joining us in our online worship for Sunday the 10th of January 2021. My name is Derek Hughes and I serve as minister here in the congregation. At least until the end of January this year, there will be no in-person worship in our sanctuary. Instead, we'll be providing some online worship. And we're really glad that wherever you are in the world, whatever time of day it is, whenever it is in the week, that you've taken the trouble to tune in to our congregational YouTube channel. I hope that all that we share in this time is a real blessing to you and that you feel the sense of God's presence near you. A religious teacher once came to Jesus and asked him to comment on which was the greatest commandment. Christ's answer comes to us in Mark chapter 12. The most important one, Jesus answered, is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. And the second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. Did you hear it? One word at the center of both of these commandments, it's the word love. It's mentioned almost 700 times in the Bible. And it's a theme for our service today. Let's pray together. God of goodness, I come into your presence so aware of my human frailty and yet overwhelmed by your love for me. I thank you that there's no human experience that I might walk through where your love cannot reach me. If I climb the highest mountain, you are there, Lord. And yet if I find myself in the darkest valley of my life, you're there also. Teach me today to love you more, to appreciate you, and help me to rest in that love, a love which asks nothing more than a simple, trusting heart, the heart of a child. At times I've tried to earn your love and to gain your approval, but no matter what I tried to do, I never feel that I've done enough. In fact, the more I try, the more I seem to fail you miserably. Help me to realize what an incorrect perception I have of you and of your unconditional love to all who are saved by grace through faith in Christ Jesus. Forgive me for misrepresenting your Father heart of love. And thank you for showing me that your love for me is not dependent on what I can do for you, but rests entirely on what you've done for me through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that your approval doesn't rely on me but on Christ. May I never again be drawn into wrong thinking about your Father heart. Instead, may I gain a greater understanding of my position in Christ. For this I ask in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. If you're a regular or even an occasional visitor to our church YouTube channel, then you may have noticed that on the home page there is a banner headline. And just underneath where it says Easter House Parish Church Glasgow, there are four words. These words are love, trust, serve, and grow. Now, they're not just words chosen at random. When I was initially setting up our YouTube channel, I felt it was kind of important to say something about the heart of what we're aiming to be as a congregation of God's people. 
And so these four words came to me very clearly. Love, trust, serve, and grow. And when I was beginning to think about what I might do as a new sermon series, leading on from the previous series throughout Advent and Christmas on the subject of humility in the characters of the Christmas story, then I thought, yeah, let's go for a four-week series based on each of those four words. Love, trust, serve, and grow. And so today, and over the next three Sundays, I want to take some time to unpack with you why I think these words are fundamental to how we live and how we express our faith. And that's as individual Christians, but it's also as a family of God's people here in Easterhouse Parish Church. But equally, I believe that these four words should be important to every one of us, no matter where we worship. They focus our attention, I think, on what's truly important, groundbreaking, radical, different about following Jesus. So we begin today by thinking about the subject of love. And in truth, when you start to reflect on that and all the Bible passages that are mentioned, then the word love comes up quite a lot. 1 Corinthians 13 is probably the major passage that would spring to mind for many people when thinking about the subject of love. I will show you the most excellent way, writes Paul. If I speak in the tongues of men or of angels, but do not have love, I'm only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor, and give over my body to hardship that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. It's a remarkable passage. It's often read at wedding ceremonies and applied to the love that exists between a husband and a wife. But of course, it's far more broad than that. It's far deeper than that. It's far more important than that. And also, as we trawl through our Bibles, we find that love comes up again and again and again. In the miracles of Jesus, for example, in the healing of the deaf and the mute and the crippled and the hungry, in the way that Christ provided for those physical and practical and spiritual needs, he was showing love. And then there's the raising of Lazarus, Mary and Martha's brother, found in John chapter 11. When Jesus saw Mary weeping, and the Jews who had come along with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in spirit and troubled. Where have you laid him? Jesus asked. Come and see, they replied. And then we have the shortest verse in the Bible. Jesus wept. The Jews said, See, 
how he loved him. Love is at the heart of Jesus' identification with Mary and Martha and with others who mourned the passing of Lazarus. And love was the power that drove the resurrection of Lazarus because Jesus, very shortly after this, speaks directly to Lazarus in the tomb and brings him back from the dead. Love is embodied in Christ and is a powerful thing indeed. And then what about the parables which are also told in Scripture at the heart of such great stories like the Good Samaritan who comes to the aid of the needy man who'd been beaten up and robbed? Lies love. And then in the story of the lost sheep and the lost son, the shepherd goes out to try and find the one out of a hundred sheep that has wandered away, motivated by love. The father who stands waiting on the prodigal son, the son who had gone and spent all his money on wine, women, and song to return. What made that father patiently wait? What made his heart leap as he saw his son return? It was love. And then there are so many stories about the way in which Jesus related to people, particularly those who were marginalized, those who were culturally on the edge, who were a little odd or peculiar or considered less important than others, the poor, women, tax collectors. Do you remember the story of Zacchaeus who was so keen to hear this Jesus and see him that he climbed up a tree and Jesus asked him to come down and he went to his home. That was a radical thing to do. He had a meal with him. He forgave him. All motivated by love. And of course, the very cross of Christ speaks to us of God's love. As he hung there, Jesus cried out, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they're doing. That's tremendous love sacrificial love, saying to his mother Mary, who stood there at the foot of the cross, and to John, one of his closest friends, this is your son, this is your mother. Even while he was dying, he had concern for other people. So there's so much about love in Scripture. It's there for us to see in different ways. But I want to home in with you for a few moments on a particular passage in the first letter of John. It's there in chapter 4, verses 7 through 12. Listen to this. It doesn't get much more plain in terms of the importance of love in these verses. John writes, Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. This is how God showed His love among us, He sent His one and only Son into the world that we might live through Him. This is love, not that we loved God, but that He loved us and sent His Son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, 
since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us, and His love is made complete in us. And then further on in verses 18 and 19, it really underlines what God's love is all about and the love that He's looking for us to show to one another. There is no fear in love, John writes. Perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. We love because He first loved us. Love comes from God. That much is very clear in these verses. Let us love one another, for love comes from God. But also, that love is to be returned to God. Verse 19, we love because He first loved us. And Jesus commanded that we show God's love by the way that we treat those around us. Verse 11, dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. It's challenging stuff, isn't it? It's strong stuff, and rightly so. In the modern world, we have far too slushy a view of love. It's fed to us through films like Love Actually, or P.S. I Love You, or Eat, Pray, Love. We imbibe it into our being through the songs that we listen to. All you need is love. Crazy little thing called love. Elvis Presley's Can't Help Falling in Love with You. Dolly Parton, Whitney Houston, that famous song, I will always love you. I'm certainly not going to try to sing it. But in spiritual terms, clearly love is about far more. It's something that goes deeper and is stronger and longer lasting. In the terms that John writes in his letters, and in the terms that Jesus showed in His ministry, love involves sacrifice. Verse 9, this is how God showed His love among us. He sent His one and only Son into the world that we might live through Him. And when you go back to 1 Corinthians 13 that I read at the beginning of this reflection, then you find that the love which Paul is writing about there is a love that's about what we give rather than what we receive. Love is patient. It's kind. It's not envious. It's not boastful. It's not proud. It's not self-seeking. It's not easily angered. Love is truthful. Love protects, it trusts, it hopes, it perseveres. And love is given its supreme expression in the incarnation, the coming in flesh of God Himself in the person of Jesus Christ. Jesus is a perfect example of how to live a life of love, and His life was a life of sacrifice. This is the time of year when many people make, and then sadly break, New Year's resolutions. They often resolve to be fitter, to be stronger, to be healthier, to eat better, to exercise more, 
or maybe to spend their time and their money well. All sorts of resolutions. What if God set that agenda for us instead of us choosing our own resolutions? Well, actually, He already did that. In John chapter 13, in John's Gospel this time, and verses 34 to 35, Jesus is speaking, and this is what He says. A new command I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. In all that I've said today, it's clear that the Bible teaches that God loves us, you and me. As unlovable as you may feel, you are loved by God. Know that in this moment, you are loved by God. How do I know? How can you know? Because as 1 John 4 tells us, He sent His Son, Jesus Christ, to show us how much He loves us. As someone once said, how do we know that Jesus loves us? Because He spread His arms out to embrace the world on the cross. That's great. That's wonderful. So we're loved. We're forgiven. We're part of God's family. We are His daughters and His sons. What impact does that have on our lives? It should be that having received His love, that we then show, that we demonstrate His love to others. How can we show that to this community of Easter House or in the community where you live? What are the acts of kindness, of goodness, of service, of love that God is calling you to? And do you see it as a duty? Is it just another box to tick? Or is it something that flows out of the love that God has for you and me? Hopefully it's the latter. Because people will truly get to know the love of God as they see it at work in and through us. And they will know then truly that we are disciples, followers, of Jesus. Let's give thanks to God and also bring our prayers for other people to His throne. Heavenly Father, we live in a world where the security we once seemed to enjoy has been eroded, and so many dark clouds of unknowing loom over us. Our future is so unpredictable. All that seemed to be so secure and reliable has turned to dust and evaporated like the morning mist. But Lord, we praise your name that we can entrust our future to you, knowing that your love surrounds us and that your grace is sufficient for all our needs. No matter how dark the circumstances of life may appear, your love in Christ inspires and upholds us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you that you have the world in the palm of your hand, and nothing can snatch us from that secure position. Thank you that we are accepted and loved by you as our Heavenly Father. Keep our hearts from unnecessary fretting, we pray. May we learn day by day to refocus our gaze upon you and to bring all of our prayerful concerns 
before you. Trusting in your care for all, we turn to prayer now in the name of Christ and in the power of the Holy Spirit for those around us. We pray, Lord, sincerely for those who are unwell at this time due to the coronavirus. God, in your compassion, grant them strength and healing. We pray for all who are anxious about loved ones, friends, neighbours. Lord, enable them to put their trust in you and to be steadfast in hope. We pray for all those who feel isolated or alone that they may experience your loving and tender presence. We pray for your church. We long to continue to praise and to serve you throughout this strange and confusing time. Even although we cannot meet in person, yet we are together in spirit. Through your creative Holy Spirit, fire our imaginations to continue to proclaim your unchanging love. We pray for all in authority who face difficult decisions that affect the lives of so many. Lord, would you grant them wisdom and courage in this time. We pray for all who are engaged in research, Lord. Grant them an understanding and an effectiveness in their task. We pray for traders and employees who are fearful about the future. We pray that businesses may be secure and that jobs may be protected. We pray for all those who are facing financial hardship. Lord, support and sustain them through this period. We remember also those who seek to fulfill Christ's command to love one another through the work of food banks and charities and through acts of simple kindness. We pray for all in education at this uncertain and anxious time. Lord, protect the vulnerable. Give fresh hope to the dismayed. And with sadness, we remember those who have lost their lives due to the coronavirus. Our hearts sink as we hear the statistics unfold day after day. Give us thankful hearts for the privilege of knowing those who have passed away and strengthen our faith in your Son who died for us and rose again for us that we may have eternal life. We pray for all who mourn that they would find comfort and hope in you, God. Lord of life, in this time of crisis for families and communities and nations across the world, we turn to you once more in faith to seek your guidance and to receive your blessing. We're reminded that nothing in all of creation can separate us from your love made known to us in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And so we bring all all of our prayers to you now in his most precious and powerful name. The love of the Lord Jesus draw you to himself. The power of the Lord Jesus strengthen you in his service. The joy of the Lord Jesus fill your hearts now and always. And the blessing of God Almighty Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you today and forevermore. Amen.